Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated and you join me at the start of a new Ireland playthrough. The Royal Court DLC came out there recently, so I'm going to start into uh, another playthrough. Uh, before I do, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported the channel and who has watched these videos over the last two years, uh, close to two years. Uh, we're currently at 1,500 subs, just hit that number recently, so thanks, uh, thanks very much to everyone who has joined in. I would ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already, if you're new here, but you know what? It doesn't make a difference. The YouTube algorithm has brought you here, and it will keep recommending these videos to you. It's already too late. I'm not going to do a big historical interlude on Ireland itself like I did at the start of the last uh, playthrough. If you're interested in what's happening in Ireland around the 1066 start, you can check out the video that I put up about Murica. Uh, pretty much goes through all the major events from the Battle of Clontarf through to kind of the very early 1100s. I will, however, do a bit of a historical explainer on the individual I'm going to be playing as. Uh, Ku Ulla, the King of Ulster or Ulla, up here in the very northeast of the country. So there'll be a, a timestamp below in the, uh, in the kind of the, or there'll be a chapter if you want to, uh, to skip all of this. Uh, Ulla is an area that I haven't really covered in any of my videos, or the Dalfiathuk, I haven't really covered them, because they have been on a downward slope Pretty much since the beginning, if we go back into the depths of Celtic mythology, uh, Ulla would have ruled all of Ulster, and they would have ruled down as far south as the Boyne. So pretty much uh, most of the, the top half of the country. They would have ruled from Aunmacha, their legendary fortification. And it's here that Fergus Macriach would have been tricked into giving up the kingship of Ulster, to Crahur Macnassa. Uh, depending on which of the legends you read, Crahur was either the grandfather or the uncle of Cúchulainn, the boy warrior. It was at Aonmacha that the warriors of Ulster were struck with the pangs of the pangs and pains of childbirth as a curse for making a pregnant woman race against a greyhound. And they were, uh, they were struck with these pains as the combined armies of Connacht, Munster, and Leinster marched to seize the Brown Bull of Cooley in Unthoinbo Hulana. Uh, Cú was the only one that wasn't struck with the pains, and he defended the, uh, the Pass of Ulster and uh, died there. Uh, but held off the forces for long enough for the, uh, the warriors of Ulster to recover and to, uh, to come out and to defeat Queen Maeve and her armies. So that's back in the depths of mythology, and it's pretty much a downward trajectory from there. Uh, shortly before the arrival of Christianity, so we're talking kind of late 300s, very early 400s, the Enail, a branch of the Connacht, push out of Connacht, and they push up into this region, and they push across into uh, Meath, and they push the Ulla eastwards. And they seize this land up here, which becomes Alach, and... Uh, later still, uh, with the arrival then of Christianity, we'll say the likes of St. Patrick. Patrick builds his great monastery. It looks like he got patronage from the Ulla. So he builds his great monastery in Ardvaka, near Aunmacha. Uh, in about 450, Aunmacha falls, and the Ulla are pushed further east into uh, the region that they occupy now in the 1066 start. Uh, St. Patrick goes with them. Uh, into exile, and that's why he's buried at uh, Dunfodrig, uh, down Patrick, down in this region. I think it's our capital. And the Ulla never really recover from this. The Enail split off the core lands of the Ulla and turn it into a, a vassal tributary, uh, the Arguilla. And the Ulla briefly attempt to... Uh, attempt a resurgence in the early 1000s when Brian Brew is trying to find allies to help him to gain the submission of the Enail. Uh, he leads marches up here in, I think it's around 1010. Uh, doesn't manage to get the submission of the Enail, and as soon as he leaves, then the Enail attack his nearest allies, which are the Ulla. Uh, so the Ulla are heavily 
crippled, basically, and on the back foot, and they're not able to join uh, Brian Brew at the Battle of Clontarf. Early 1060s, they're still in utter chaos. Uh, 1062, the king of the Ulla, Nile, dies. His son, Ucca, either died the year beforehand, or succeeds him as king, and dies the following year. His successor, uh, Dunica Umahona, is killed in internal faction fighting in 1065, and that's when our boy, Ku Ulla, the Hound of Ulster, becomes the King of Ulla. Now what we're going to try and do is push out, we're going to try and reclaim Ulster. We're going to take back our ancient heartland. We're going to do the Irish version of Remove Carling, which is Remove Enail. So we're going to try and take um, Arguilla, Alloch. We're going to push down then and try and take Athlone. And what we're going to do is restore the Dalfiathach and the Ulla to their former greatness, their legendary greatness. Restore the rule of of the Disciples of St. Patrick. That's what we're going to try and do. IRL, IRL, in real life Ireland, things do not go too well for Kuala. Uh, he's deposed in 1071, uh, exiled to Leinster, and there he is killed in 1072. And like I said, the region never really recovers, uh, holds on until the arrival of the Normans, and I think it's either the de Courcys or the de Lacy's, or both, who uh, come up into this region and uh, seize it and use it as their kind of base for the seizure of uh, of the rest of Ulster. So we're going to try and delve back into the depths of Celtic mythology and restore the legendary greatness of the Ulla and the Dalfiathuk. Uh, the Dalfiathuk, of course, would be one of the branches of Ulla, along with the likes of the Dalnaradi and the much more famous Dalriada, who would have once ruled a kingdom that would have kind of stretched uh, along this entire region. We have an interesting character to play as. He is chased. And he has no heirs. Oh, that's problematic. But he is uh, deceitful, so I'm hoping that'll give us the intrigue lifestyle choices, and we can try and make him a seducer. I think. We'll try and go down that line and get some ladies. Get some, uh, some sons and heirs for our army, most important of all. Um, I don't have many mods installed for this. I have the ethnicities and portraits expanded, and I have the community flavor pack, which adds some absolutely fantastic clothing options. I uh, really like these. So they're they're new from uh, over the, uh, the kind of the base game. And what we're going to try and do is, is establish a royal court. We're going to try and establish the Kingdom of Ireland, establish a royal court, and fill all the positions and cause bedlam and anarchy. I won't be going for anything like a... Uh, a mixed, um, what would you call it, um, cultures. So I won't be going for hybrid cultures or anything like that. I'm going to do a different playthrough. I have an idea for a different playthrough where I will form uh, a hybrid culture. But uh, for now, we will simply begin and try and restore the glory of Ulla as St. Patrick strikes back. Okay, so just like that, we do have a son and heir. Never mind. It actually auto-generated some, uh, some family for us. Uh, like I said, Kuala is a real historical person, but um, they've just given us a ton of, of fictional people. We don't know a huge amount about him. Like I said, he just rules from 1065 to 1071. What I'm going to do is I am going to... Let's see. We'll start here. We'll go for our lifestyles. They have indeed given us the Intrigue lifestyle. They have completed the Schemer tree for us, so I think I will... I think I'll go for Seducer. This is the first time in a long time that I've played as a... an Intrigue character since the glory days of Flanchina 2. We'll go for the Temptation Focus, which will give us increased fertility. And we will start plotting our immediate takeover. Uh, the first area that we're going to be going for is Arguilla. So just taking a quick look around the court, I have switched my auto-generated daughter, Big Monster, Moor Muin, from uh, the military focus to intrigue. She's sadistic, 
So I've switched her to Intrigue, and you know what? I'm going to train her myself. So we'll send that proposal. Here's our wife, who I think was also auto-generated. Looks like it. Um, that's where... Oh, that's where Moor Moon got that sadistic trait. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves if we can divorce our wife. We are, of course, Insular Christian. I'd be hoping someday that we might see... First of all, a an insular style of divorce, which was basically divorce at will. You would basically pay the honor price to the person that you want to divorce, but also that we'd probably see insular Christianity removed and the interesting or unique aspects of it worked into the uh, the heritage. So we will divorce her, and we'll see if we can form a better alliance with somebody. It's not a perfect match. I was hoping to find somebody closer, but there doesn't look to be anybody in Ireland or Scotland that would marry me. So we're going to France. We're taking the horse to France, and we're coming home with a wife, Ida of Lyon. Her father, he's got a bigger army than ours. It's not great. We'll send off that proposal anyway. For our eldest son and heir, who I think his name is pronounced something like Quirkte. And we'll marry him into Brittany. So that'll get us another couple of hundred soldiers. And we have our daughter. Um, she's serving as our spy master at the moment, so... We'll see if we can maybe... Get a better spy master and then marry her off. Now, he might be a good fellow, but he's a poor doctor. But he's also the best that we have. Troy Goodfellow. Aptitude, poor, but we will appoint him as our uh, court physician. And I think that's most of the major stuff that we need to get done uh, straight away. I did give a very quick look at the council. I... Uh, what did I do? I sacked some people... I put our daughter in as the spy master. And what we'll do is... We're going to have to wait a short while because our monthly income is not high enough to try and uh, put in a claim on our gulla just yet, I think. We'll leave it a while and we'll see if we can form some alliances. So we've started a scheme to try and seduce our wife. Uh, or we're going to sway her first of all, because there's a 0% chance that we can seduce her. Here is the Isles raising forces and going off in some direction. And here is Dunpodrig. Uh, Down Patrick, modern day Down Patrick. Uh, where St. Patrick is buried. I think, do we have... I think Armagh is... Oh, they've actually put a church in Armagh. I remember back... At the start, the church was somewhere else, and Arma or Dvaka had nothing in it. Uh, but this is the uh, the kind of the ancient lands of the Ulla. We're going to try and seize those once we get some money together. I miss the days when I could go raiding. I hate being feudal. As they will more than likely be coming into use soon enough. We'll take a look at our knights. A few of them do not like us. Our mayor, the mayor of Carrick Fergus. I think we sacked him as our um, spy master. He was a nine. So he doesn't like us. There's Troy. Troy's doing mighty work. So yeah, we're going to need to try and get some, uh, some knights. Uh, we might wait until we get some money together before we go inviting any. And just about a year into the game, we as might as well begin with the process of trying to lay claim to Oriel. If we can do that and form the Duchy of Ulster, the Kingdom of Ulster, then we should be able to seize Alloc. I don't think we're going to vassalize Alloc. We're going to seize all of the lands of the Enail and then try and push down through Brefni and Athlone. And push down into the uh, the heartland of Ireland. And see what we can do from there. We got raiders going around and coming for Down Patrick. And there's not a lot we can do. Iceland, you devils. There really is not a lot that we can do against a force of that size. 
with our current money. You devils! You absolute devils! Now what's, what's actually going to happen here? Are we going to have some people see some courtiers were killed? Some courtiers were killed. God damn them anyway. So like I said, once upon a time, a branch of the Ulla, the Dalriada, would have reached across into this region. Across into Scotland. Uh, so I think this is a bit further out from where the kingdom of Dalriada would have stretched. Some people think that... Um, the Dalriada and the Picts merged together to form the Kingdom of Scotland. But we're going to marry our daughter. It's the loss of our spymaster. But she's going to be married to the brother of the current King of Scotland. And that will give us uh, an alliance with 800 troops. And it's going to be closer than a lot of the uh, alliances that we have formed so far. And of course we're in trouble. I won't say we're in trouble, but Iceland is causing a lot of a lot of hassle here. They've killed some of our courtiers. That uh, alliance has been agreed to. And there's our angry mayor. Gets to go back and put on his big emo cloak. I was going to say hopefully Iceland will leave after this, but there's nowhere else that they can raid. Uh, they've taken they've taken all of our our regions, and like I said, killed some of our courtiers. So they're heading for Arguilla. Let the Enail deal with them. So our spy master has insulted the uh, Eib, the ruler of Alech. We're going to say, ha, good one. Because of course we do not like these people. Uh, we're training our daughter Mormoon in the ways of intrigue. There's nothing. I don't think Cynical gives us anything intrigue. It does. So let's take a bit of stress to make her Cynical. We have managed to get a claim to go back into the records and prove that Arguilla is the land of the Ulla, the ancient core lands and capital of the Ulla. To do so, however, there's a bit of stamp duty to be paid. There's a bribe of 90 gold. I'm not going to lose all fabricate claim progress. We're going to take that. We're making, we're at 77 and we're making 5 a month or 0.5 a month because, of course, we suffered a massive raid in this region from Iceland. It's going to take us. It's, it's not going to be too bad to, to pay that off. We're not going to be in a in this position for a while. Probably we're going to get some negative, some negative events because of it. So yeah, our daughter is throwing snowballs at us. We could either uh, throw some back at her until our fingertips freeze off. That's probably not not great. We get plus twenty opinion. She's already at ninety two. We did take some stress to uh, teach her to be cynical. We've just spent all the money that we have to try and reclaim our ancient homeland, so I think we're a bit stressed at the moment. We're going to decrease some stress, and uh, we're a bit occupied. We're a bit busy. Now, of course, the major setback is that we can't declare war until we come out of death, so we're going to pretty much have to just... Uh, hold on. That's only going to be a year and a bit. It's going to be 1072 before... The penalty for being raided is lifted. Uh, the Countess has become pregnant. So we're going to have a child. Uh, we are in a bit of a problem. She's lustful. We're chaste. So there's a minus 10 uh, opinion penalty there. Of course, she's Catholic and we're insular Christian. But uh, it is it is making things a bit difficult. But... Let's see if we can sway her enough that we can start seducing her. So, Rumon, this absolute fool, our suffragan bishop has come to us to tell us that our marriage with Countess Ida from France is consanguinous or consanguineous. 
that we are too closely related. You're an idiot. Uh, he's going to lose 10 opinion of us, and there is a 100% chance success that we prove the claim is false. I don't know how he even got this idiotic idea into his head. That's going to affect his uh, opinion of us even more. Uh, so he's not endorsing us at the moment, but we don't exactly have a lot of church land, so it doesn't make much of a difference. Not a huge amount of... I won't say not a huge amount of options. We could, we could start going down the torture route. We don't really have anyone to capture or torture at the moment, so I think we're just going to go for Unshackled Lust. And that reminds me that something we should probably do is unshackle said lust and start picking up some secondary spouses. Now, we won't be able to, or it's highly unlikely that we'll be able to form any alliances, uh, but what we can start to do is no inheritable traits. That's an inheritable trait. That's the best trait. That's the greatest trait ever. That's also a, a trait. It, it's, it's a trait. It's not a great trait. Uh, let's go and look for some secondary wives. So here is really our, I won't say our best option. We have this, the best trait ever. Big giant of a woman. Marrying giant women did good for us in the last, the, the first big playthrough that I did. Giant women. That's the path to success. She is ill at the moment, however, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off um, on that. And of course, we are informed that we have a daughter. I think it's Kintigrin. May you grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. So we're in need of money. It's maybe a bit late to be thinking about this now. We're almost out of debt. We're in need of money. And here, across the way, in the Isles, is little Baba, the granddaughter of King Harold IV, and the daughter and heir to King Gudrid of the Isles. 85% chance of success. Okay, he doesn't have a huge amount of money, but it's a lot more. Oh, and he's losing money as well. Let's see if we can... Abduct the baby. Our son has had a child. We'll give him Cronon. There you go. May you grow to be strong and wise. So our mayor truly is a genius. He has managed to find a way into the study where this zero year old baby is keeping all of her drafted letters, all of her messages, all of her communications are now mine to read. Absolutely fan- great job. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's great. Can she even draw at this stage? It was Lucky Break, nothing more, gives us uh, scheme power and scheme success chance. I think we get more if we go for this option, but there's also minus five Actually, no, I think this is a better option in all ways. Makes shapes and form. So we'll take that. So we failed to sway the wife. We're going to try and seduce her. It has a 10% chance of success. And because we're chased, we've gained stress. We've gotten ourselves stressed out because we have to go and talk to girls. Speaking of which, just while we're waiting to come out of debt, is there a big... There's a big woman and she's not sick anymore. There you go. We'll send her a proposal to become our secondary wife. Which she has accepted. We're almost out of debt. We're just a couple of months short of 1071, the year in which, historically, Kuala was deposed in Ulster. Uh, deposed from Ulla. And maybe this is going to be the year that he manages to turn everything around. These guys still haven't actually formed any alliances. Uh, we can declare war for our claim to Oriel. We have a couple of hundred troops more than them. Uh, but for the price of some prestige, we as might as well call in our son-in-law. We will raise our armies. 
Um, I wouldn't have been in a position to... to... hire any knights. It's going up into the hills. They are defending in the hills. They have a defensive building. They have more minute arms. We have better commanders. So I think we can we can hold off here for a second. We'll see if um, if our son-in-law accepts and if he begins marching in our direction. Uh, he's accepted anyway. And there he's coming down with 800 troops. So we might move them across. And worst comes to worst, if we are defeated, uh, he'll be down in a few seconds to help us out. As we begin our battle to take back the remains of Aunmacha and Ordvaka itself, the great monastery of St. Patrick. Here we are, trying to impress the wife in the middle of a battle. Our options seem to be plus one diplomacy or plus 15 to the scheme success chance. That's what we'll go with. We march in for our first battle. It looks like we'll take it easily enough, but they are going to be in a position to march their forces around again, and we might indeed be able to siege down uh, Armagh. No, we can't. Well, we can. Dundelgan. Oh no, we don't. We don't have enough soldiers, so we do. We definitely needed the, um, the army. And speak of the devil, our mayor has died from the injuries that he received at the Battle of Dundelgan. And in one go, we have managed with that defeat to capture the Enail ruler, Donal, of Arguilla. We've captured a ton of people. We enforce our demands. And so our great campaign to restore the glory of Ulla begins. Okay, we have a couple of things to do. First of all, most importantly, there is absolutely no point kidnapping this baby because her father is bankrupt. So, whatever. I have... I've been reading her correspondence and I'm terrified. I'm absolutely just frightened by what I've read. So we'll abandon that. Our problem now is that I don't think we have any other great options. Everyone is pretty much 5%. Here is Murcha MacDiarmada. So his father has passed away, uh, Diarmid MacMoyle Namo. So that makes Murcha, I think, the King of Dublin and Leinster. Uh, everyone's pretty much at 5%. We'll start that scheme. We'll see what we can do. We will need, of course, maybe it's because our spy master hasn't been appointed yet, so I should have actually checked that. Um, we're going to appoint the new uh, mayor. So this isn't the mayor that has... Here's the mayor that replaced the mayor that died uh, in the mayor of Carrick Fergus. This is one of the mayors in um, Armagh. So they will be assigned as our new spy master. Does that do anything for our success? It brings it up to 14. Nice. The mayor of Carrick Fergus, of course, died from wounds received at the Battle of Dundelgan. His successor wants a court position. He is actually a better steward than our son. So we will assign uh, him to the position. And there is Bishop Kumasuch. Also wants a position, but I think he's useless at everything. Pretty much. Pretty much. So we're now in a position where we're making one gold per month. And I think we need about 220 to form the Kingdom of Ulster. We need 80 to put a claim on Alloc and seize that. So we are going to have to kidnap children. We're going to have to kidnap as many children as we can get our hands on and ransom them back to their parents. Uh, we're still trying to impress our wife. We're trying to seduce her. And from her stats, I think we will go... We'll try and entertain her. We'll see if that is any good. Uh, it was a good choice. There you go. She's entertained. She's entertained. So in our attempt to kidnap 
the youngest son of the King of Leinster. We're going to lose some secrecy, but gain scheme power and scheme success chances by hiring some informants, so we'll try that. Any times that I've played as intrigue-minded characters, I've never actually gone down the abduction uh, route. We have the ability to form hooks on people, so it might be worth looking at some stage into going down the stewardship route as well and getting the uh, the ability to sell hooks for money. Uh, the wife seems to have rejected us. That's 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 a terror. That's a terror. Well, off you go, so then. So the wife is having none of it. Let's see if we can uh, sway or seduce the big lady. We'd better we'd better deal with this first of all. We're after getting ourselves sick. Uh, we're ill. I don't know if he's improved any better as um, a physician. Let's see how good you are, good fellow. Do no more than is necessary. He's made it worse. Oh. So we're we're sick, and in my foolishness, I went to seduce the big giant woman. Uh, we have now broken ourselves with stress. So he's ill. He's worried about the future of the family. He's become uh, stressful. Or he's become stressed, I should say. He could become a flagellant. Go baiting himself with a whip. There's a tiny health penalty, which probably isn't great at the moment. Or we could make him a drunkard, which is also going to be a tiny health penalty. Now is not the time for any of these. I think we're going to try and be strong and resist the impulses. We will gain more stress. And we're going to have to make sure not to go seducing any more women. Because we're afraid of girls. We are the worst pickup artist ever. Uh, moved by my tribulations, Mayor Orthodox has offered me his counsel and aid on many occasions, hoping to alleviate the burden of my duties. However, his attentions have incurred the ire of Mayor Etna. Orthodox cannot be trusted. This is merely a ploy to exploit you, my liege. I don't know, do I trust you? Oh, I'd better, you're my spymaster. So Orthodox becomes our friend, we get a weak hook on him. Etna becomes our rival and we lose stress. An 11% chance that we lose stress. Or we lose dread and stress. Do we have much dread? That's not me. We don't really have dread, so it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. But this woman's already at 100, so I think if we lose... Oh, she'll become our rival, though. We don't want her become our becoming our rival. So Orthanuk loses 30 opinion. We lose dread and stress. And here's the big woman. So we go for a budding interest. So one of the big problems that we have when we're trying to kidnap babies is that they're all in foreign realms. So we only have about a 5% uh, success chance to kidnap them. I'm trying to kidnap somebody now who's in my own court. They're a guest, and my hope is that we'll be able to kidnap them. They have very high intrigue, 19, which might make it difficult to kidnap them. But if I kidnap them, make them my spy master. Because who doesn't want to be the spy master of somebody who kidnapped them? So kidnap them, recruit them, make them my spy master, send them to kidnap children. That's what I'm thinking. Martha. We go for something informative. It was a good choice. Here is Dervla. Very high intrigue. She's trying to keep a secret from us. There's an intrigue challenge. We could just keep Aiton. Let's try and do the intrigue challenge. Let's see if we can find out why the food was so tasty. 
As we enter the kitchen, we find the cookbook covered in stains. When cooking liver, it has been noted that excessive beer consumption can significantly lower the quality of the organ. A cold feeling settles in my chest as I turn to another page. However, when cooking younger children... So we could either execute her, we could throw her in our dungeons, or execute her and gain critical levels of stress which would give us a mental breakdown. We will throw her in the dungeon. The dungeon's a great old place to go. Uh, more with the baby. Somebody's planning to travel from Dublin to Leinster. Dublin's in Leinster, but okay. I've arranged for some brigands to uh, interrupt this little journey. Make sure he arrives here instead. It's going to cost us 15 gold, 22% chance. Yeah. Risk is too great for now anyway, because I don't have the money. And for once, one of our success, or one of our scheme chances, our scheme uh, events has succeeded. It's caused us enough stress, so it would want to have succeeded. Uh, we seduce our secondary wife. And look at that, we're back to our old selves again. Happy out. So I've also started a scheme to sway somebody in Leinster to see if we can maybe convince them to actually uh, join our plot to kidnap the baby. It's a pity that we can't try and seduce people there. Countess Martha has gained the trait pregnant. So we're going to try and abduct this baby again. When the time comes, my agents will need a safe route to transport Let Lober out of Earl Murcha's castle. A detailed map of the local plains, with all its hidden paths and caves, should be an invaluable resource. So we could pay a hunter 15 quid. We could explore the plains ourselves, so there's a 60% chance of success. And a 40% chance that we gain enough stress that will that will bait the living daylights out of us. Um, I think we'll abandon the idea because I don't think we can get that much money from the kid. And our secondary wife has given us a son. Um, let's see. Dunadach. Sure, Dunadach. Our daughter... Moor Muen has come of age. Unfortunately, she has not picked up any of uh, much intrigue from us. And even more unfortunately, she has picked up our chaste trait. Uh, they grow up so fast. We'll see if we can form any solid alliances. So with the Earldom of Ossery, there's Markarthuk Makgilaforic. I don't think he's actually uh, the heir. Is the heir unmarried? The heir is unmarried. Well, an heir to something, anyway. So we'll propose that marriage. That'll give us an alliance to Osri, uh, which we can possibly use against Leinster, because Leinster will try and take Osri at some stage. And... Are we trying to kidnap the baby again? No, this is the this is a bigger baby that's in our court that we are going to try and kidnap. 85% chance to kidnap him. We have managed to abduct somebody. A giant baby. So now our courts are full of people. Or uh, by our courts, I mean our dungeons. Here's the baby again, actually. Uh, 15 quid for 22% chance of success. Nah, it's too great. And there is that alliance now formed with Ossery. So that'll bring us into the affairs of the, uh, the south of the island. Uh, gives us even more impetus to divorce our primary wife. I'll see about that now in a few seconds. So I forgot about Donal. He's been in our prison for three years. I've just released him. To fight in our army because he has fantastic prowess. And I got so confused I wasn't sure if I actually recruited him or not. Here we have... So very interesting. I kidnapped this guy to make him a spy. And now this cook actually has higher spy craftery. So I will... Well, she's actually already in our court. So we'll gain a weak hook on her. And negotiate her release. 
And I can recruit this guy instead of paying the money for him. So we will negotiate his release. So we wait until we get the pop-up. So there's Dervil. Watch your step now. Dervil or Dervla. And here's the other guy. Flahman. So what we will do is we will make the ultimate intrigue family. We will make the two of them marry each other. And it will be a matrilineal marriage. So the Carthy, or the McCarthy surname, will continue on. So we will send that proposal. And we will come to the council. We will change our spy master. So here is very much the best choice. So she's gone from cooking dogs to becoming our spy master. And I don't know if that's actually going to do anything for our attempts to kidnap a baby. Not much. Not much. Let's go and see if there's any other babies we can kidnap. So we're back to the Isles. We're back to kidnapping daughters of the King of the Isles. There's Asta. I'll close this for a second. We'll see... There is Asta, who we were trying to kidnap a while ago. Also, we can't use, we can't make another attempt to kidnap them until 1081. We have an 85% chance of success and an 85% chance of being discovered. I can never actually read this. Predicted secrecy is 85%. Now that's good, so then. I can never read that. I can never I can never figure out what it's saying there. So it's uh, we have a good chance to kidnap a baby. He's gotten some money back and he's making money. So we'll try and kidnap his daughter now. If we could get 13 quid, that would be fantastic. I was literally just thinking of divorcing her, but our wife, our primary wife has become pregnant. Uh, we're getting close to a stage where we could actually declare war on Aloch. Troy Goodfellow has become a novice physician. He's learned from messing things up a while ago. And our secondary wife has become pregnant. So we're going to have two children. Who needs to hire knights? You can just have children. It's fine. And so, an opportunity to kidnap a spooky baby with hands coming out of their belly presents itself. We have an 85% chance of success. We will make the attempt and there you go. Finally, our great goal has been achieved. We've kidnapped a baby. We didn't care about restoring Ulster to its former glory. We didn't care about restoring the ancient monastery. That's yeah, not all that ancient. 600 years. The, the Monastery of St. Patrick to the control of the Ulla. No, capturing babies and ransoming them out. That's what we wanted. So we're going to see if we can offer. I suppose what's the easiest way to, to go about it? Prison. 25 quid for a baby. Yes, fantastic. Speaking of babies, our primary wife has given us a second daughter, Orla. May you grow to be strong and wise. And 25 quid has been wired to us. We've checked Revolut and it's in the account. We're all happy, which was good timing because Scotland has just absorbed the Isles. Have they been deposed? No, he's still there. Uh, but he has now accepted the vassalage of Scotland. There must have been a war going on or something. So there you go, Scotland has now... expanded in a worrying direction towards us. I think this is a measure of just how far Ulla has fallen. Once a great legendary kingdom in Irish mythology, the home of the greatest warriors that Ireland had ever known now reduced to kidnapping children. We found another target. We'll start that scheme. 
we've about another 100 gold to go. I think we get a reduction to the uh, to the cost. I think it's 212 is what we need to form the Duchy of Ulster. I had to think there for a second. So we've we've kidnapped one child and we've taken one county. Things have moved slow. We are very caught for money. And of course it was that raid by Iceland at the start that messed everything up as well. That uh, took even longer for us to uh, claim Argola. I had to think there for a second. Again. Because I was thinking, would it be best to spend 80 quid on seizing Alloc? Should we lay claim to Alloc? Seize it? And then we'd have the three counties generating money. If we were able to kidnap people and ransom them off faster, we'd be doing well. But that's not happening at the moment. Let's let's see how this next ransom goes. And if it goes poorly, we'll think about actually seizing Alloc by force and uh, saving up the money to form the Duchy of Ulster that way. Uh, through actually exploiting the uh, the uh, the earnings from the county. I have a lifestyle perk to pick. I'm kind of just wandering randomly down the seducer path, but of course we're now in a position where it's causing us a lot of uh, problems because our our stress is so high, and because we're afraid of girls, our stress gets high if we try and talk to them. I might as well just go for home advantage, I have the option of either switching to Skullduggery Focus to increase, and I should have maybe done this um, as soon as we, we had a couple of children, uh, to get Agent Acceptance up, or what I could try and do is come across to Wealth Focus. That might actually be a good idea for now. We're going to come across, we're going to switch to Wealth Focus, 10% uh, monthly income, and we're going to try and get Golden Obligations. Uh, so we can demand payment for hooks because we already have fabricate hook scheme. So what we can start doing is uh, scheming around our court and foreign courts and try and get the money together that way. Kidnapping babies is all well and good, but it, it hasn't been going great for us. So what we're going to try and do instead is fabricate hooks on babies. There, next level strategic thinking. And that will bring almost the first decade of Ku Ulla's rule to an end. Again, he actually came to power in 1065, so we're we're just a year short of his first decade in power in Ulla. He has doubled the size of his kingdom. He has retaken Argulla. He has driven out the givers of hostages. Uh, he has retaken the monastery of St. Patrick and the ruins of Aun Maka. Munster has consolidated, Leinster has consolidated, even though technically it's one province from me than one province from Leinster, it's actually, uh, Dublin would always have been part of, of Leinster. The county of Dublin is probably a bit too big. You could strip a couple of, strip off that uh, barony and maybe one or two baronies up here. It'd be nice if you could do kind of, um, what would you call them? Treaty ports as is coming in Vicky 3, because then you could have you could have Limerick, you could have Cork, you could have Waterford, Wexford and Wicklow, and Dublin. I guess that's really all there were, was just kind of cities more so than big, big settlements. Uh, Connacht has consolidated, it has taken Brefney. Ulster has consolidated, but Scotland has consolidated. Uh, so that puts us in a, a difficult position. We do need to try and take Alloc as quickly as possible. Uh, we're still in a position, with or without Alloc, to form the Duchy of Ulster, or the Kingdom of Ulster, once we have the money. But that is our big, big problem, is getting that money together. And that is going to be the task on the next episode. Thank you for joining me on this one. Uh, do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. And I hope to see you on the next one as we continue to try and kidnap babies and get money.